Happy Friday, everyone. We are live in Studio B alongside Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. This is your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play, -play, and we welcome in now BYU basketball assistant coach Cahill Fennell to help us preview the weekend, specifically TCU and coach. I know we're a few days removed from it, but can we just revel in it a little bit longer and congratulate you once again on a monumental win at Kansas? Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, revel all you want. I think for fans, for uh, the media to a certain degree, I think for our, our young players, I think it's important to appreciate it and enjoy it. Um, but for us, we, we have to move on. There's a next fight, and TCU's a really good team, so we have to get ready for that game on Saturday. More fun to win on Tuesday than Saturday because you can enjoy it on Wednesday. A little bit into Thursday, you move on right to the next game. But um, what was the celebration like? Because you guys come back at 2.30 in the morning at the Provo Airport. There's all these students uh, excited about it. That was a cool moment. It was really cool. It was very, very special. I, I think there's very few places in the country um, that have that kind of home support with their, with their student section. I think our student section is as good as anybody in the country. Um, we're really fortunate to, be a, to have them be a part of our program and, and to really back us the way they do. Um, but to arrive after a long day and a long flight and, and for them to be sitting there in the cold at 2.30 in the morning was really, really cool. So uh, it was awesome to see them out there and, and I'm just really, really appreciative of everything they do. Cahill Finnell is with us on BYU Sports Nation. It was sideways snowing at the end of the game <laughs> in Lawrence. 70 degrees earlier in the day when we're driving in and then just sideways snow. So how was, how was the venture home given the crazy weather, but you're just riding that emotional high? Yeah, I, I think the travel it felt a little bit like planes, trains, and automobiles where you're, you're on buses and you're sitting on the tarmac and you're sitting in the runway and all this kind of stuff. But um, all that is, is very, very much secondary to, to the win and uh, for the feeling for our players. And you're, you're so proud of them. You're so happy for them. And uh, I'm really glad they got to experience that. And I think they were just asleep on the plane by that point. So, uh, but to, like I said, to have that welcoming from The Rock was, was really special. Some of the best performances for this team, as Spencer pointed out last week, have come after perhaps some of the more disappointing losses. Yeah. That summoning of, hey, we got to get up for this game is amazing. What's sustainable from Tuesday that you hope to carry into another big game Saturday against TCU? Let's be honest. If you want to kind of get your best seed in, in Kansas City and in March Madness, you got to win Saturday. Yeah, no question. I think the, the Saturday game is really important for a lot of different reasons. Uh, you mentioned the postseason. Um, in my opinion, that, that's less or so, but more so just so we continue to play good basketball. We want to be peaking at the right time. We want to string together really good performances. Uh, we don't want it to become a, a peaks and troughs kind of a feel where uh, we can really get up for one game and the next game it's a little bit of a dud. So uh, we'd like to get to or get ourselves to a point where we're consistently playing our best, best ball and we're showing up every single night and we're making it hard for people and uh, we're taking the fight to people and hopefully that's what people took from, or not people, but our players uh, took from the Kansas game where they feel like this is what game winning basketball looks like. It's this kind of a fight. It's this kind of an effort for 40 minutes uh, because we're going to need that on Saturday. And if you can do it in Lawrence, you can certainly do it at home against TCU at Iowa State. You can make it a, a good game as well in any neutral venue. So that, that's exciting. We we've seen a great performance, but hopefully it's not the best performance. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, right. Exactly. You want to build on that. You yes. want to grow from that. You want to progress from there. That's so. the high so far. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's the goal moving forward. All right, I'm sure you've already been asked at least 17 times, but how do you avoid the cliche emotional letdown after a big win like that, coming home and avoid relaxing? I know it's the Big 12, so you can't really relax for anybody, but, but still there is this idea that, man, that was such an emotional high. How do we, how do we maintain for the next game? No question. That's a great question. I, I think... We're a little bit fortunate in the sense where the caliber of our opponent does that, does our job a little bit as coaches, right? It was like, we have to show up. Like, we, we can't just, just walk in there and expect to win because we're at home, because we beat Kansas. None of that matters, especially with a team like TCU, who's, who's been really effective on the road. Um, they're really well coached by Jamie Dixon, who's been fantastic from his time at Pittsburgh and now TCU. Um, they're exceptionally tough and hard playing every single night, doesn't matter the opponent. Um, so that's a massive, massive challenge for us, right? So um, in the best of circumstances, <laughs> coming off a great win, that's gonna be a, a huge task for us to beat TCU. So uh, we have to show up ready to fight. They've beaten Houston. Just that fact alone is like, okay, the high is real high for these guys. They love to push the ball. They create steals. They get out and transition. They're number one in the country in fast break points. How do you sort of limit allowing them to do that? 
I think a big part is our offense. I think if we can limit our own turnovers, that'll really uh, give ourselves a head start to getting back in transition defense, uh, get really good shots. Uh, the thing with them that's tricky and, and really challenging, it's not just turnovers, right? They'll run off misses, makes, blocks, everything in between. So um, their, their lag-free reaction going from defense to offense is exceptional. Uh, you can just see all five guys on the floor when you're watching film with them just immediately uh, turn their brains into sprinting in the break and, and being really dynamic on the offensive transition. So um, for us, we have to match that intensity. We have to match that kind of defensive focus. Um, and we really, really have to make that a priority. What parts of this matchup do you feel may favor your team and what you do best? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> As a coach, you, you nitpick so much stuff. You're like, oh my goodness, I don't know how we're going to do this. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> Do we do anything better? Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I, I think we're, we're a really good team. We're mature. We can, we can beat anybody in the country on any given night. We've proven that more than once. Um, and I think we just have to come up and uh, come out, I should say, and, and just do what we do. I think when we start to stray from our individual talents and, and abilities and, and our roles, um, I think collectively when we, when we lose our identity a little bit, um, we we can, we can stray off course and we can not play as well as we'd like. And um, I think for us to be victorious on Saturday, we just have to really lean into our principles and our fundamentals of, of defense and, and what we do on offense, taking care of the basketball and being really aggressive and, and bringing on the front foot and, uh, and taking the fight to them. And I think if we can do that, we'll, we'll be right where we want to be. Cahill gets the soccer, rugby, front foot, <laughs> ball in hand references. His, yeah. do, your kids play rugby. Is that where you learned some of those sort of they're more European probably. phrases. Yeah, so. yeah, probably being on the front foot and, and all that stuff. Front foot ball, that's, that's how we like to play. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's how you roll. Emmanuel Miller is a senior from Canada who's a really good scorer. He's shooting 44% from three in uh, league play. How do you limit what he does? He's a scorer and he can't make shots, but like he scores and makes shots based off his intensity and effort, right? His motor is exceptional. His toughness and physicality is exceptional. I mean, you, you mentioned the Houston game. Um, the, the reason they're able to compete and beat those kind of teams is like they can fight with anybody. Mm -hmm. and, and he's just the linchpin of everything they do in that regard. He's just so, uh, he's a grown man out there, you know, and, and we're going to have to match that physicality and intensity and motor. Uh, we can't be seconds to the fight. We have to hit first with him with everything he does, whether it's a driver, uh, whether it's sprinting in transition, whether keeping him off the offensive glass in the post. Um, so all those things are going to go a long way towards limiting him. It is officially March. March <laughs> yes, basketball is. is here. Yeah. Cahill Finnell is with us. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. Was, Thank you. He's, he's got that mouth trumpet thing. Yeah, that's yeah. like a hidden talent. It's one, of his, it's one of his things. Yeah. David Letterman, you remember stupid human tricks? <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have even qualified yeah. for that. I don't know, man. That was, that was high level. It's, uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> your, sure. your, your stupid human trick, well, it's not stupid, is your on-air math. <laughs> So Just good on-air math. Just Do you have a stupid human trick? I don't. Stupid human, but no trick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Every coach needs to have, like, a decompression zone. I, I know that, like, you are go, 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 go. But, like, at some point, you have to, like, give your mind a mental break. So what is, what is the decompression zone for Cahill Fennell when you have, like, you know, five minutes to catch your breath? That's a great question. Uh, <laughs> nothing comes to mind. I, I think if there's one thing, it would be watching my kids play sports. Like, that's a good way for me to kind of just relax, not coach them at all. Yeah. Just kind of appreciate them having fun and competing. Um, my kids are they're jerks when it comes to sports and, and competing <laughs> and all that kind of stuff and, and kind of reining them in and kind of taking that edge off them a little bit is is kind of fun right but just watching them you know fight in jujitsu and play rugby and play basketball and everything else um, that's a, a great way for me to relax and obviously spend some time with them and appreciate time with them it's a reset of sorts absolutely and then you can re-engage yeah it's, it's really important to me it's, it's huge for our family for sure so are you like engaging them in physical like wrestling or whatever in your house given that they want physical contact clearly with jujitsu and rugby i don't engage in <laughs> <laughs> you allow I, that at practice I, yeah it just happens i mean like my wife has videos of them when they were in, literally in diapers just attacking me and jumping on me on the couch yes, and which is fun fighting each other just constantly since they're very very small and yeah. for whatever reason that's just how they're wired and it's <laughs> it's problematic where where <laughs> does that come from I don't know. I've, I don't know. My wife's a tough woman. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've generally been described to have a spicy disposition, so I, I don't know. I think they, <laughs> <laughs> I, they just come by it naturally, I guess. Well, w when does this come out? Because when you talk with us, you're pretty chill. You're pretty chill. So where's the spicy disposition? Like, in the heart of competition? And, like, as a coach now, when is that? In practice? In a game? Yeah, I mean, it, it, all those Was things, it you that got the tech a couple games ago against Baylor? I did get a tech. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> There's the spicy disposition. I did get a 10 against Baylor, unfortunately. That was. What'd you do? Pop not, up to Not my quick? finest hour. I, I was too far on the floor, and I think it was an accumulation of naughty behavior. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not my best hour. That was, that was unfortunate. Funny. But I hurt the team there. But, um, yeah, I, I, it doesn't take much. I, I can get pretty fired. The team got after you? No. Oh. No. But they could have. They should have. It was my fault. <laughs> so, I owe them. I this, I is think ex a, this is extreme ownership. Well, yes, it is. <laughs> I, think a, ownership. I think a well-placed technical is a, one of the greatest strategies you can employ. I think Mark's tech was well-employed in the Kansas game. It, whether you like it or not, it gets you a few calls later. And, in fact, we like it. Um, is there a strategy to how verbose, how spicy you could be at a certain point that may help your team in a way? Yeah, I think there is. I, I, I I wouldn't say that's what happened in my in my case, but um, I, I, to your point, I thought coaches, you know, showing fight and and being a little ornery and, and having some edge. I think that goes a long way, not only with your team but the environment mm -hmm. and taking a little bit of an ownership. And we're not just the victims here. Um, and I thought that was great, and, and I thought our guys responded to it, and, and it paid off. I thought so. That was during a dead ball. It d the crowd doesn't really get into it when it's a dead ball. When it's a live ball, maybe that could have been hard to suppress, right, in that gym. But Trevin Nell. His engagement with Hunter Dickinson I thought was important yeah. of we're not going to back down. No question. And, and Hunter, to his credit, sort of walks through that on purpose, and it gets interesting, a little spicy, as you mentioned. But I thought Trevin's sort of reaction there and, and what a, you live with the consequences, I thought that was an important moment for BYU. I, Did you feel that way in terms 100%. of, hey, we're here? A hundred percent. And I think that's really important for us and how we're perceived as a program and a team and, and as individuals, as players. And there, there can't be a victimhood mentality where th we just allow things to happen to us. Eventually, yeah. we've got to draw a line in the sand, whether that's in the course of play, uh, whether it's in those kind of dead ball situations where this kind of um, confrontational situation ensues. And, and we cannot continue to take backward steps. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's really, really important for how we're perceived and how we're viewed and, and how we're approached. I think when teams view us, it has to be in a certain way and it has to be with respect. And uh, they have to view us as the tougher team. I love that with Trevin because he would not be described as having a spicy disposition. No. He's like the nice guy. In the uh, heat of competition. But in the heat of competition, he's he a gets different animal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's like a that. different yeah, animal. Uh, we'll finish with this. Coach Pope says a lot of interesting things. And by the way, your, imper <laughs> your impersonation of him, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, like all of the coaches' the coach impersonations are really amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay? And this Trevin Nell, right? Yeah, that was good. Um, but I, I was really taken back by something he said in the post game in Lawrence when I was in there, and, and he said, after my technical foul, like, I probably shouldn't have let my emotions get that way, but I went back, and my team's composure was perfect, he said. Their composure was perfect. It takes a long time to get to that way, to not be rattled in an environment like that yeah. when you're still down and it's emotional. What, what has led to this, this composure that BYU is showing consistently? Like, yeah. Because it's a long road, so what, what's gone into that? I think it's just experience. You know, I've said it a few times where we have some older players, obviously, as you know, as the whole country knows. Uh, we have some older players as far as age, but we also have some older players as far as experience. They've been in so many different environments, whether it's Gonzaga or, or all these kind of teams that we've played and we've been fortunate enough to play. Uh, and I think over time, you kind of get a feel for 18,000 people in the crowd that are yelling at you. You get a feel for bad calls. You get a feel for um, dudes that are being jerks on the floor. Like, you just have to learn that like different situations how to deal with them in different ways at different times of the game and and I think our guys have got more on their tape now and I think it's shown in how they're comporting themselves and their poise and um, I think it's really special and I think as far as long as they continue to kind of communicate that with themselves and kind of take ownership of that themselves uh, I think it really can serve us well moving forward. Well for what it's worth I thought your composure as a coaching staff was pretty good too I mean even after the game's over I just wondered, I'm like, when, when do the emotions let loose for the coaches after, after a win like this? Is that locker room only? Like, is that, is that behind closed doors only? I don't know. After the Baylor game, I, I was pretty fired up coming off the floor, and I was yelling at my wife and kids. And <laughs> the spots they just, they just were yelling at me, yeah. and just like, I took a step back. I was like, what is wrong with us? But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're a little bit different. But, yeah, I, for me, uh, you know, it's pretty internal and just thinking about the next thing and how we're going to win this next game. It's okay to emote. That's what they say. That's what, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they tell me. The emotions <laughs> out. What am I doing? I'm excited. Yeah. It's a big, hey, last two Tuesdays, number 11, number 7 wins. It's uh, awesome to get excited. Well, thanks for coming in. Thank and, you so uh, much Good for luck me. against CCO. Appreciate you. Hey, we'll keep an eye on the bench. No more texts. <laughs> hey, great conversation, awesome. Thanks so much.